Cryorig has been around for quite a while, and I've got to admit, they make some pretty cool-looking coolers. Yeah, I, w I went there. It's always pleasing to come across a company that values both functionality and beauty. And in the case of the Cryorig C1, no exception was made. A first glance of the C1's box gives the impression that a fairly large cooler lay inside. The top pack contains every piece of mounting hardware required by LGA775, 1150X, 2011 V3, FM2+, AM3+, you get the point. The pack underneath houses both the cooler and slim 140mm fan. The fan itself is black in color, comprised of 13 blades, and is capable of rotating anywhere from 700 to 1300 times per minute. You're welcome to replace this one with any 140mm unit, but I can't really imagine why you'd want to. At only 13mm thick, it's sure to be the best fan for the job. The cooler is much larger than I expected it to be, although its form factor is mini ITX friendly. It's surrounded by a large white bezel, which I find to be very classy, and is accompanied on one side by six massive 6mm nickel-plated copper heat pipes, which proved to be excellent dissipators of heat. After all, that kind of is the point here. Cryowig's iconic logo resides on the opposite face, and that's essentially it. The cooler is sturdy, weighs more than you think it would, just over half a kilogram, and is interlaced with several fins, the more the better to an extent. The fan is PWM controlled, allowing for optimal manual settings. PWM, by the way, stands for pulse width modulation, just to you know, satisfy your curiosity there. Generally preferable over three pin voltage regulated fans of lesser grade. You can also tuck the sleeved fan cable into rubber retentions along the four corners of the frame, depending on where you decide to route it. The clips are a bit difficult to re-secure, something I do wish Cryrick had thought through a little more, but that's just kind of me being picky. The installation packet was a straight up carnival of mounting screws and backplates. You're also given a large tube of thermal paste with the C1. I still recommend Arctic Silver 5 for now, but this will definitely get the job done, especially if you have nothing else on hand. Nice inclusion nonetheless. A bunch of fan and bracket screws, caps, and something else unexpected. A large Phillips head screwdriver, looky there. Cryrig included it for the sake of mounting the cooler, which you'll see shortly, and I'm glad they did. It's a nice inclusion to any toolkit regardless, even if you don't decide to use this thing. I mean, come on, free tools, right? Free tools. I'll be mounting the C1 in my brother's old rig, sporting an FX6300, which means that we'll be needing this backplate suitable for AM3 and FM2 motherboards. And just like the stock plate, this one's made of metal, not plastic. For the record, the Intel plate was as well. It's nice to see even expensive water coolers include plastic backplates, so a nice touch here. Here's a representation of just how large the Cryrig C1 is. Yeah, that's the stock AMD cooler right next to it. Night and day difference in terms of both sound and performance. By the way, don't mount the fan until after you've mounted the cooler. You'll see why here in a second. Cryrig includes quite a number of special accessories that make this cooler appear premium, and when you have a look at the price, you can't really blame them for trying. I mean, come on, an alcohol pad? I guess so? I mean, we'll put it to use in this video, but I can't really see... I, I guess I guess it doesn't hurt to have it. I will say that the manual is very detailed and easy to follow. I'm glad I opened it. There are several screw packets to sort through here. You can also download the manual from their website, linked in this video's description. So let's get to it then. This one is for AMD, but Intel shouldn't be too difficult to follow either. After all, you do have that excellent manual. Start by removing the plastic pieces up front. We won't need these, but save them just in case. You can also store the old metal backplate, Cryorig includes their own. Use the thumb screws lined with rubber pads on their bottoms to secure the new backplate, being careful not to over tighten. They're called thumb screws for a reason, folks. Insert the front plate and use the short stubby screws to lock it into place, one on each corner. Again, don't over tighten these. No Phillips screwdriver is required. If your CPU has old thermal paste pre applied, you can remove it with the included isopropyl alcohol pad. I guess I'll use it here, but be careful. It is runny and fairly thin. Only 70% too. I recommend 90 or higher. After ensuring that the CPU heat spreader is dry, you may remove the plastic cover covering the nickel plated base. Look how nice and shiny that thing is. Apply a fresh line of thermal paste and align the two spring loaded screws on the cooler, which you can secure from the top. See why we shouldn't have installed the fan in the first place with the holes on the front plate. Sorry, that was a lot of. That was a lot of interjections in one sentence. This took some time and four hands. The C1 was super stubborn, and without help from my brother, I doubt we could have properly secured it. There was plenty of clearance over the Crucial Ballistic Sport RAM on board, but we found that it was much easier to mount vertically. I, I don't really know why, I can't really explain it. But regardless, the fan will be pointing downwards, sure to cool off voltage regulator modules and the CPU itself. Once the cooler is mounted, screw in the 140mm fan of your choice. Again, I see nothing wrong with using the low-profile Cryorig fan. It's quiet, efficient, and low-profile, important especially for those tightly packed ITX builds. 
After plugging in the fan power cable, this can be tricky if you didn't already plug it in before you secure the cooler. Take a few seconds to admire the Cryorig C1. It's honestly one of my favorite coolers hands down, thanks not only to its unique orientation, but its minimalistic functional design. My brother was very happy he received a CPU cooler upgrade, trust me it was much needed, no more jet engine sounds, and we were both satisfied with the new look. The C1 offered plenty of clearance underneath even when oriented upward, and honestly it, looks just, it just looks good. This one's sure to complement any rig and hold its own against even the toughest of overclocks. Speaking of which, what are the temperatures like? Well, off the bat, idles noticeably improved when just sitting there looking pretty. Temperatures were in the mid-20s, roughly 10 degrees lower than with the stock cooler. Keep in mind this is with an AMD FX6300. And surprise, surprise, overclocked to 4.4 GHz, the differences were just as stark. While the stock cooler brought the FX6300 to 76 degrees Celsius and a degree of thermal throttling at that, the C1 performed as expected, pushing temperatures down into the low 60s, safe operating temperatures for pile driver CPUs. So at this point, all is well, right? I should just end the video here. Well, I would. Now, the C1 is undoubtedly a great cooler, but one thing has me hung up here, the price. At a little over 60 US dollars currently, it's certainly no bargain, and I'm sure many of you are wondering how well the Hyper 212 Evo stacks up, probably the most popular air cooler around, thanks to its effectiveness and low price. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed. Don't get me wrong, you can't get much better than the C1 when it comes to thermal maintenance. But it's 60 US dollars? It makes me cringe. Come on, Cryorig. This one was a review sample that they sent me, but I am willing to admit that I would not use my own personal money to purchase this cooler at this price. If it creeps into the $40 range, though, I personally guarantee you, Cryorig, you'll have the competitive advantage you're looking for. You can find a link to the Cryorig C1 in this video's description. Like I said, love the cooler, just don't love the price. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.